Oi, wakey wakey shithead, it's time to talk about SCP. One of the strangest cultural phenomenons I have ever encountered on the internet. Nowhere else can you come across something that can be genuinely considered a piece of professional art right next to the most cringeworthy piece of fanfiction ever conceived. SCP-4032 is... Oh god, it's the fucking... It's the gassing SCP, what the fuck? Wait, what? <laughs> <laughs> An open source horror series with a cancerously contrived lore centering around the eponymous SCP Foundation, the most comically incompetent paranormal organization ever written. And I think it's fairly safe to say that SCP wouldn't have gotten to such a monolithical point without one key thing. 2012 Horror Let's Players. <gasps> SCP Containment Breach is a horror game. A horror game released in the year of our Lord 2012, which I will reiterate was an excellent year for horror games. Created by Eunice Rikkonen, a Finnish man who previously created SCP-087-B, a walking simulator where you fumble around generic brick corridors until a PNG jumps out and screams at you. <laughs> which is essentially what Containment Breach is, but with extra steps. Um, do you know what? I think I'll just take the stairs. Yeah. You play as a Class D member of the SCP Foundation. The D in Class D stands for fucking screwed. You are the shit that the science team throws at the wall. And by wall, I mean eldritch horrors beyond your comprehension. Surely, nothing can go wrong from storing such abominations in tightly cramped- you're greeted by the guards, who I assume got their training from playing Gmod Dark RP. Citizens aren't supposed to have guns. Uh, admins aren't supposed to suck dicks. <laughs> Naturally, shit goes wrong. Everyone forgets their training, and everyone gets their shit pushed in. And you need to escape. Unfortunately for you, the protagonist, you have been endowed with the powers of quick saving, essentially dooming you to an eternity of reliving the same traumatic events over and over and over again, with the only way to maintain your grip on sanity being to find the most ridiculous <gasps> ways of dying possible. Your main adversary will be SCP-173, the original, the OG, if you will, who cannot move unless he breaks line of sight. Unfortunately for you, you haven't slept since Joe Biden won the elections, and you blink ridiculously often. Joe, I'm half expecting to get jump scared as soon as I open my eyes. <laughs> In spite of this game's survival horror status, you are not expected to survive. The base game mechanics and the randomized map layout are geared in such a way they will take you multiple playthroughs, hours of experimentation, and endless nights of screaming into your microphone to make sense of what the hell's going on. The maps may be randomly generated, but you're always guaranteed certain items within certain rooms. Key cards, documents with key codes scored on them, notes written by your co-workers slowly going insane, you know, boring shit. You know what's not boring? Gas masks. Specifically, Russian gas masks. Equipping it offers you a get out of jail free card if you get into any overtly sticky situations, because it transports you to... Uh... Yeah, moving on. The cowbell is, well, a cowbell, and if you ring it, it will... Oh. There is also a glory hole, which, if you slip something special inside, it will give you something special in return. Oh, nice, I got a key. I'm not sure what else I'm supposed to say about that, really. I'm gonna go on a tangent for a second because I have a contrarian opinion that I wish to share with you. There are people out there who would tell you that horror games that arm you with weapons are much scarier than those without, with the mentality being, if this game's giving me a weapon, it means I have to use it. I disagree, because whenever I get a gun in a horror game, I think, <laughs> this game's giving me a weapon, that means I get to use it. Resident Evil, Silent Hill, Cry of Fear, Afraid of Monsters, one Wonderful horror experiences by all accounts, but they just don't scare me. If I can blow a motherfucker's head off with a shotgun, then that makes me the monster, not whatever the fuck this is. Containment Breach, of course, doesn't do this. Canonically, this is because literally every single enemy encountered are so far beyond the concepts of reality that they are pretty much immune to bullets. It's also probably because half of these motherfuckers are essentially overpowered Sonic OC characters who don't afraid of anything. In gameplay, however, this all plays in the game's favor. Yes, it is all running and hiding, however, each different entity comes with their own styles of pursuit and present different threats and obstacles that you will have to maneuver around or flee from in a variety of different ways. Let's put it this way, you come across the most basic enemy in the game, a fucking plague doctor. Wow, creative. He slowly walks towards you. If he touches you, you die. Oh no, that's okay. Just lock yourself in a keycard room and everything will be a- Oh, the old man, colloquially known as the Radical Larry, 
Yes, seriously. Can appear literally anywhere at any time and phases through walls like he doesn't even give a fuck. So you try to run away. And then you notice your stamina bar draining faster than usual. And then you put on the NVGs. For fuck's sake. Essentially what I'm saying is that the variety in enemies and the roles they play in the sandbox go a long way in enhancing the game. Forcing you to strategize, learn the map layout, and figure shit out on the fly. Until you get to the MTF units. Oh, baby, it's triple! These beefcates put 096 to shame, because by the time you figure out they're there, they've already 360 quickscoped your ass. <laughs> what the fuck? I just fucking got here, what the fuck? Seriously, fuck these guys. They're hit-scanning pieces of shit that break the game's pace and have a high chance of soft-locking you because of how persistent and aggressive their AI is. And this problem is exacerbated by the fact that these guys know exactly where you are at all times due to the CCTV cameras dotted throughout the fucking facility. What I can absolutely admire about this game, however, is how willing it is to go out of its way to betray its own unsettling tone to take the piss out of itself. There is a basement in this game, a basement full of native Floridian wildlife. There is also a severed black hand, which can be used for opening fingerprint scanners. Very useful. But what if it was more useful? There is a machine called SCP-914, which allows you to upgrade or downgrade different items. Naturally, upgrading this severed hand of a black man will turn it into the severed hand of a white man. Oh my god, SCP is so racist. Cancel, 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 cancel. The irony is not lost on me. There really is no end to the things you can put into this machine. I once put a first aid kit in on very fine, and in return, I received a strange bottle of fluids. This strange bottle of fluids activated my menstrual cycle, and I quickly bled to death. Or perhaps you think this machine is your chance for perfection. I dolphin dive straight into the input slot, only to re-emerge at supersonic speed, bursting through every door I came across, before quickly succumbing to a fucking heart attack. Do you need more evidence that this game is secretly a comedy in disguise? Okay, well, here you go. After listening to a man blow his own fucking head off in the bathroom, I approach one of the cubicles, when suddenly the toilet starts speaking to me, threatening to eat my ass. I encountered the head office, where it turns out the site director had kept a stash of cannabis on his desk at all times, and you can smoke it. <laughs> what is with this fucking game? Then of course we get to the coffee machine, which dispenses literally anything but. Naturally, my first instinct was to order a shot of whiskey. Do a shot of whiskey! Do a shot of whiskey! Do a motherfucking shot of whiskey! You can also drink God. Uh, that doesn't sound good. Uh, 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 Jesus fucking Christ! However, if you're really desperate, you can always order a cup filled to the brim with cum. I'd like to imagine the interrogator, whose job it is to get the main character in for questioning, and he asks him to turn out his pockets, and he just hands him a cup full of someone's cum. <laughs> And then he pats him down a little bit later, only to find a severed hand, a joint, and a fucking credit card. <laughs> but let's get serious for a second. The atmosphere in this game is seriously good. As a containment breach kicks off, the sounds of the ensuing chaos echo throughout the facility. There's gunshots, people screaming, and most importantly, monsters. <laughs> Eventually all goes silent, a thick fog engulfing the hallways, ensuring you can't see any further than a few meters in front of you. Your movement is slow and sluggish, and every other room you enter is littered with choke points and hidden compartments from where you can easily get ambushed at any given moment. As I said earlier, most horror games allow the player some form of reprieve in the form of a safe room that allows you to compartmentalize your inventory and gain yourself some breathing space. Containment Breach, however, utilizes containment chambers for the different entities as save points. Knowing that you're forced to save your game in a room right next to, um, this. All this droning music plays in the background. You don't feel safe whatsoever. And even if they're just for show, the threat of 106 showing up out of fucking nowhere is very real, forcing you to constantly remain on the move and funneling you into contact with more and more creatures that want nothing to do than use your small intestine as a fucking flashlight. The game even somehow manages to make the main menu feel dangerous. I can only wonder how many people immediately shut down the game for fear of what's to come just by listening to the menu theme.
In fact, what they've done with the soundtrack overall is phenomenal. Most of the tracks are essentially just stock royalty-free pieces from Kevin fucking McLeod, and yet it somehow complements the brooding dread that follows you throughout your descent into the facility. I mean, obviously the best track in the game is O12's theme. There's also a radio that does literally nothing other than play fucking elevator music 24-7. <laughs> There's just so much fucking static going on, I can't understand a single word this guy's saying. What, is he recording this on an Xbox mic? What the fuck? Now, I understand that this game was made on the budget of a $3 bill and a Twix, and while I'm sure it was a top-shelf Twix, it wasn't enough to stop this game being held together by nothing but spit, tape, and a prayer to God. Some may call these spatial anomalies. I call them bugs, because I'm not on the autism spectrum. I just want to remind everyone everyone that there is a device designed to break a subject's femur bone to lure Radical Larry back into containment via the agonized screams of said victim. And this exists in the same universe as Evil Wizard Ruth Bader Ginsburg. Oh my god! Given the randomized layout of the map per each playthrough, sometimes the map will attempt to, uh, fold in on itself. And in attempting to access these folded rooms, you will essentially just be stuck in the fucking void. As mentioned earlier, 096 will set out to murder you if you view his face. Hello, uh, past Yoshi? Yeah, this is you from the future in the editing room. Um, you never actually said this, you bumbling fucking idiots. You might want to at least consider checking through your script from time to time, you jackass. Nothing can stop his wrath. Except for elevators, apparently, I don't know. I mean, I snuck up to the missile silo, and in spite of his manic screams, he simply could not find a way to get to me. Probably because the SCP Foundation haven't invented stairs yet. There is a skull in light containment that, if touched, will force you to relive the memories of a deceased holocaust for- Okay, Jesus fucking Christ. Uh, once again, Al Gore is a fucking SCP in this continuity! However, it intermittently teleports you between the flashback and the present, and unfortunately for me... Oh, and also, regardless of how many walls are between you and them, the voices will sometimes go full schizo on you after detecting you through the walls. Who's that? Who the hell is that? I mean, when it comes down to it, some of these bugs are really quite funny. However, they can completely break the game if storyline-centric rooms are mapping over each other. Your progress will remain completely dead in the water, and you will have no choice but to start all over again on a new save. And I don't need to tell you how fucking frustrating that is. So long story short, in spite of its incredibly obvious shortcomings, namely the dated visuals and the bugs, Containment Breach is perhaps one of the greatest horror games I've ever played. It's incredibly apparent that every single second spent working on this game by the dev team has done so with unadulted passion for the world of SCP, yet is able to stand up on its own two legs as a tense and relentless experience that has haunted the internet halls of fame for over a decade now. I think it's safe to say that this game has gone on to inspire plenty of other people to make their own contributions in the SCP community as well. I mean, do I even need to go into SCP Secret Laboratory? Don't worry, Eva. SCP it will take a couple of minutes. Okay, Frank. I gotta go. See you later as Eva walked away. So, Frank, walked into the wreck. What am I listening to? Where's the bed? <laughs> Where's the bed? Asks Frank. You'll also be pleased to learn of this game's vibrant modding community, among which is the Ultimate Edition mod, compiling many different mods, bug fixes, and mechanical features into an already tight and compelling experience. Best of all, if screaming your nuts off on your own isn't enough for you, there is a co-op mod which is available to download for free on Steam. The scariest thing, I think, about co-op is having to listen to a drunk Irishman kill himself over and over again. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so hang on, wait a All second, right. wait a second, wait a second, wait, 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 wait! <laughs> I, how many times did I say wait, you fucking idiot? I was gonna stop last second, but... No, I... <sighs> fucking hell. I thought, I, I this fucking guy. I thought I had an extra step. In any case, that's all from me. I have a Patreon for those of you who fanatically enjoy my content enough that you want to support this god-awful content. Behind-the-scenes footage, special Discord roles, and the newly appointed Friday Movie Night event are all I have to offer you, but none of which can rival my undying thanks for your support. Like, subscribe, hit the bell, all of that good stuff. Thank you very much for watching, and please, have a great day.